Uh, you're very welcome along. It is Sunday's Off the Ball. Joe Malloy with you this afternoon. We have two Premier League commentaries on the way, including Manchester United away to Wolves. That's at half past four. Before that at two, it's Spurs against Watford with Dave McIntyre and Brian Kerr. We are also at Crow Park. The Camogie All-Ireland semi-final doubleheader gets underway from two. Sarah O'Donovan with us this hour and right across the afternoon. We've already, by the way, recorded the paper review. It is waiting for you on all our social channels or to podcast. Gavin Comiskey and Conor McKeown in great form with us earlier on. 53106 is the text number. We are at Off The Ball on Twitter. Uh, it's great to have you with us. So uh, this hour, we're busy. We're going to be chatting with uh, Dave and Brian Kerr in advance of our first game. We'll be over to Crow Park ahead of the Camogie doubleheader. We're going to be talking shortly with Daryl Kaneja and Enda McGinley about another extraordinary all Ireland football semi-final but first some good news from Tokyo to tell you about you would have just heard about it there in the news bulletin so uh, Jason Smith doing what Jason Smith tends to do uh, he's won gold for Ireland at the Paralympic Games this in the T13 100 metres there was 0.1 of a second in it it was a photo finish um, his Algerian opponent Skander Athmani was 0.1 of a second uh, behind him. It was that close. And uh, this, for Jason Smith, is his sixth Paralympic gold medal. Absolutely extraordinary career. One of the great underrated careers, I think it's fair to say, in Irish sport, uh, Jason Smith. His sixth gold medal at uh, various Paralympic Games. And uh, he was, uh, I wouldn't say worried coming into these games, but certainly his Algerian opponent, uh, Skander Athmani, had ran uh, quicker than Smith this year. Smith has had a lot of injury problems, but he has come good at the right time. And that continues his extraordinary record. Jason Smith has never lost a championship race. He is unbeaten. So it would have been very easy for him to bow out five years ago after uh, Rio with the perfect record but uh, he kept going came through injury this year it's his sixth Paralympic gold he has eight world championship goals like I said never beaten unbeaten at championships which is extraordinary and uh, his time was 10.53 seconds 10.53 seconds today and Athmani's was 10.54 so uh, fine margins and all that uh, so big congratulations to uh, Jason Smith follows Ellen Keane from Thursday uh, more reaction to Smith later on on the show. We'll bring you some of his reaction uh, speaking afterwards as well. We do have our All Ireland football final lineup. Saturday, September the 11th, it's going to be Tyrone against Mayo. Not the pair most of us would have picked out a few weeks back. Uh, another extraordinary semi final at Crow Park. Kerry, 22 points. Tyrone, 3 14 after extra time. In a few moments, Daryl Kaneja and Enda McGinley with us. First, the reaction from both camps. We'll start here with, uh, well, a man who's been there and done it as a player, and now he's starting to do it as a manager. Brian Dewher, uh, Dewher here talking to Off the Ball's Ashleen O'Reilly post match. Have a listen. Brian Dewar, I'll let you catch your breath a small bit. You're literally just off the pitch. Unbelievable game. It had absolutely everything. I think it was one of the best game of footballs I've seen in a very, very long time, or maybe ever. Is there a sense of relief? Oh, there definitely is, because coming down here, we just didn't know what way boys were going to react, you know. And we had we were come down with a few short, obviously, as everybody's seen. Um, we had to go off men halfway through it just because of the, just the energy levels weren't right. But, you know, thankfully the other boys came in and they all chipped away and the boys done remarkable there considering what they've been through this last couple of weeks. Exactly. And at times there, you know, you were down two men with black cards. We've seen Darren McCurry there as well. What did you think on that black card? Was it a black card? I didn't see his black card, to be honest. I know it was off the ball, so we'll look at it some other time. Uh, but... You know, it is what it is. Um, if the referee seen it, whatever decision they made, like, we have to live by it and go on with it. You know, so we took it on. It definitely didn't help us. We had two black cards, so we were playing 20 minutes of the normal time without a, without a man, and then we lost another third one at the end up. I suppose the game was over at that stage, but you know, it's something that we can do without, to be honest, and it's not something I like seeing particularly. And we spoke about the bench so many times when I spoke to you through the championship, and once again, that bench, Colin McShane, 1 3 even Dara Canavan just the energy that he brought when he came on it was just something else and I'd say as a manager it's so important to be able to look onto the bench and see these lads and you know they're going to make an impact it is it's definitely important you know, it's great to have game changers there on the bench and you know what we have many of them there and we actually have more back that we can't put on our 26 unfortunately that really put on a tremendous effort during the year you know and that's why we've got to where we've got to is because of them people but as you say it's great to bring on men that can make a difference and they certainly did today 
And you showed a lot of grit, determination, the turnovers in that first half, you know, to come out with the ball at pace. And you got a lot of your scores from that. Is that something you really sort of said to the lads coming out here? I suppose it's something, you know, it's not we were probably a bit too much last that's the pen, you know, on occasion. But at the same time, we're very good men to do it back there. But it's too much there for my liking. But it's something I've never liked back there. I'd like to probably cut the scores out a bit further up the field, but or the potential scores. But, you know, so be it. That's the way it was. And it was where we built from, you know, but it's hard work whenever you have to build the whole way up the field for a score every time, you know, and it is draining and this energy sapping. But, you know, the boys, they found it in their legs there to push on. So, you know, it was, good. It was just good to get there. Yeah, Brian Dewar there. So uh, Peter Keane then, I guess, uh, into his uh, third year of three years uh, as agreed with the Kerry County Board. Dublin in the All-Ireland final three years ago, uh, two years ago rather, Cork in the Munster final last year and now Tyrone at the All-Ireland semi-final stage. Here's uh, Peter Keane. This was his reaction afterwards. Peter, understandably, you're feeling absolutely devastated after that. How can you sum it all up? Um, I suppose it's difficult to sum it up um, in a few words, but we are obviously very disappointed. We came here into an Ireland semi-final with the ambition of getting to a final, and we've come up short by a point in that, so look, we are disappointed. But, you know, I'd have to say I'm terribly proud of the lads. Um, they, they died on their back today. They gave it everything they possibly could, even at the end. Do you know, when we went into extra time, we conceded a goal and two points early on to go five down and got it back, got it back to a goal, um, one score at half time and extra time and kept chipping away. And even at the ditch, you know, we had an opportunity to, to, to level it again. And where do you feel it went wrong today? Can you pinpoint any few mistakes or where it was? Yeah, look, I suppose that's something that will happen in, in, in time. Do you know, we'll, we'll look at that a bit more. And so obviously into extra time and you're losing David Clifford, you know, he's a massive player for you. That's obviously a huge loss. Yeah, sure. I suppose. Look, if you look at if you look at him in the game itself, I think he had scored eight points, you know. So look, a player of his calibre is always going to be a loss. But look, that's what happens. And you had five weeks to prepare for the game. Is it too much time? Was it a bit too much time without game time? Well, I suppose, look, we were obviously preparing for three. We knew we would have three, and then we were preparing for four, and then it was five. But look, we're here today, and um, there's much point complaining about anything. And will you stay with Kerry, do you think? Ah, uh, We'll decide that in time. Yeah, Peter Keane there with Ashley O'Reilly. Very happy to say we have All-Ireland winners uh, with us. Darrow Kaneja of Kerry, Enda McGinley of uh, Tyrone and uh, an extraordinary <laughs> Tyrone uh, performance for so many reasons. Uh, there was a never, they never say uh, die quality throughout. I mean, you can kind of forget in this game as well with two minutes of normal time to go and admittedly there turned out to be nine minutes injury time. But even with two minutes to go of normal, Tom O'Sullivan pops over a point. Kerry are... Two points up with about three minutes of normal time to go and sitting at home, I said, well, that's a wrap. Yeah, and yet, funny watching it in, in Crow Park, I, I didn't particularly feel that. I felt the game was so in, in your face. It was so aggressive. It was so sort of attritional and full of energy. There was mistakes coming on both sides that you always felt there was going to be chances. You knew there'd been a lot of injuries, so you reckoned even a, a standard county game now has five, six minutes, so you knew it was going to be a long period of time. And Tyrone looked to have the energy to carry. We're cramping more than Tyrone, even at that stage. So you always knew there was a chance. And listen, Tyrone wouldn't have been disappointed. One or two points down, Tyrone were coming in as rank underdog. So from a player mindset point of view, when you're coming in as a rank underdog and you've still got something in that fight with two minutes to go or coming into injury time, you're more than happy. You throw the kitchen sink at it, knowing that you've you've got to that final hurdle. And for Tyrone coming into this game against what was an unbelievable carry side and, and the results that they had been chalking up and the scores that they had been chalking up. For Drone, it was about hanging in there, hanging in there, hanging in there. And if you were there at the death, well, you would have known that Kerry hadn't been particularly tried and tested this year. They hadn't really been to them, them deep corners of tough games against tough opponents where Drone had been. And, and that has always been down through the years across a number of carry battles. I know for myself, the player group that I was a part of, I was always part of our psyche too, that if we can bring these boys down to the last five minutes, we know that we have been through harder battles than they have. And that gives you a confidence. It doesn't guarantee anything, but it certainly gives you a confidence that you're more than comfortable in that scenario. And so there would have been no despondency. There'd have been no uh, fear of that situation. I think if anything, Kerry would have been more worried that 
we still haven't these boys put away and these boys are still there and whenever they look in the rear view mirror at that late stage in the game and realise that Throne are right there and as a player on the pitch you're realising these boys have legs there, there's going to be nearly more worry on the carry half than there is on, on, on the Throne half Yeah, Dara, take him to the trenches that was going to be the Tyrone aim at the outset they did it how did Kerry respond or not respond for you? I think we've just lost Dara Okanaja. We'll bring him back in a second. I'll put the same question to you, though. And uh, when Tyrone did manage to take Kerry into a battle, into the trenches, how did they respond for you? What did you see from Kerry? I, I seem to be absolutely honest. I've I seen a fairly tired team. Uh, I've seen a team, and particularly when, when they were shorn of, of David Clifford and he wasn't moving right. Uh, I, I think Tyrone were gaining great energy from the fact that Kerry were physically seeming to struggle now to their eternal credit and, and Peter Keane mentioned it in, in the interview like the first quarter or the first half of extra time it felt like Tyrone were completely overrunning them it felt Tyrone were just the boys on the pitch with all the energy and Kerry were absolutely foundering and to their credit they came right back at Tyrone and showed I, I thought they were gone I thought they were like a, a boxer on the rope that it was time for the ref to step in but in fairness they came right back at Tyrone and, and brought it right down to the wire and in fairness I think like Tommy Walsh is an experienced player. I think he's bound to regret the, the, the decision he took with that last kick because it looked it looked made for Kerry to, to play the ball and keep the ball on, until until the right opportunity arose or until you won a free. Uh, so I, I know a lot has been made that, that Kerry, Kerry died away. I, I think that's a fairly easy conclusion, I think, to, to the players' credit. It was not going their way. Throne were the team with the energy and got the goal at a critical time and they, they were struggling up front and yet they stuck at it. So uh, we would have to be careful to, to completely dismiss Kerry, but I suppose uh, from a Kerry point of view, they'll, they'll be worried about the, the conditioning issue that, that seemed to present yesterday at critical stages uh, and, and Throne seemed to have that extra uh, inch in, in, in their step and it, it made a big difference at the end. Yeah. Dara, the uh, conditioning issue for sure and also some of the decision making has been roundly criticised the reliance on Clifford a lot went wrong for Kerry as that game continued yesterday not least extra time you think of the first five minutes every time Tyrone picked up a ball and ran at Kerry they just seemed so open so vulnerable in that first period of extra time I mean an awful lot here for Kerry to think about over the winter an awful lot yeah an awful lot to be uh, food for thought over the course of the winter I think when you mention conditioning it's the conditioning game conditioning um, that was Tyrone's third game in a row against Division 1 opposition and previous to that they played last year's Ulster champions and uh, Kerry, it was a cause of concern coming in into the game that Kerry's preparation how good were they really all these scores you, you kind of get lulled into a fond sense of security when you hit 21 goals it's an obvious area for opposition to work on and it's also as, as a forward you tend to think oh this is easy we're going to be doing this again and again and again and I suppose the expectation, of course, should have been with Tyrone and probably was, I'm sure, that Tyrone would have an awful lot of homework done defensively and you'd have to admire their resolve and their defiance and their stubbornness and their intelligence in defending. And that was one of the great defensive performances by the Tyrone backs yesterday. They constantly set the traps for the Kerry lads to walk into and walk into them. They didn't, they turned them over. But it was very intelligent defending, very clever football being played. And uh, yeah, I think when Enda mentions conditioning, I don't know if it's actual physical conditioning, it's almost a mental conditioning that you haven't been to the wire. And this Kerry group have been to the wire, I suppose, not that often over the last three or four years, the All-Ireland drawn game 2019, the Cork game last year, and yesterday's game where they, they came up short on, on certain accounts. And, um, you know, lamping in 21 goals in a league and championship, while it's brilliant to watch and you'd rather have it than not, at the same time, you have to be constantly on the guard that, you know, this is eventually going to dry up and what are we going to do then? Um, they found answers to some of that yesterday. They did play some good football yesterday, but not good enough and on the wrong side of the result again. And it, it will hurt for, for the entire winter. Yeah, sure will. And like on, on Kerry being untested, Dara, I mean, that's exemplified all over the pitch. I mean, somebody like Paddy Clifford, who's been so brilliant 
you know, all season and then suddenly he finds Connor Myler in Crow Park. That's a very different proposition. And, and those many mo- moments were happening all over the place. And mm-hmm. uh, the decision making as well was kind of strange at times, like a lot of blind alleys uh, run into throughout the 70 minutes, balls, you know, ball taken into possession, a lot of turnovers. If there's a defining aspect of that game, it was probably the number of turnovers. Yeah, and if you if you look at the, I suppose the different metrics over the course of the game, you'd say, you know, kickouts seem to be a big thing these days. Carry one and off lot of their kickouts, carry one and off lot of Tyrone's kickouts, and you'd say on that possession alone, mm. they should have been creating the conditions to finish one or two points or three points up. Um, but you'd, again, you'd give credit Tyrone for living off the crumbs that they did and for maximising what what they did on those turnovers. Uh, the first goal, Jack Larry was turned over initially, David Clifford turned over directly afterwards and it led up to the first goal. And, you know, that set the seed out, I'm sure. Things that weren't going right for Kerry as well, it was the first thing I got maybe that, okay, maybe this is not going to be a good day, was um, where Kerry worked one of their goals and uh, actually had it disallowed uh, for Stephen O'Brien inside the square. There were elementary errors you know, in the punch pass and being in, in, in the square even. Um, it, it, it was kind of, you're just going, oh, maybe this isn't going to be such a great day. But you tend to overcome those things. You mentioned Paddy Clifford. He had been having a very good year. And in fairness, as the game wore on and into extra time, he did manage to yeah. shake off Conor Moyle to an extent. But it was always going to be a big ask for a player playing his first championship season, you know. And he played a co- couple of minutes in that Cork game last year, had been outstanding during the course of the league. And again, it's massive. It's a massive learning curve for him. He was an, an outstanding county championship footballer, an outstanding Sigerson footballer, largely unproven at inter-county level. And, you know, this was a first serious test. I won't say he failed because he actually grew into the game as the game went on. But at the same time, it was a lot to put on him. Um, it should have been, you know, that David, the brother, is used to handling that that pressure, I suppose, over the course of three years. Sean O'Shea is used to carrying the can up front a bit. Um, David Moore and carries it in midfield. Certain leaders like Paul Murphy and these lads uh, deliver on a consistent basis. But it was a lot to expect of Paddy Clifford. And again, I'd credit Conor Myler, his stamina, um, his attention to detail. For the first half in, in particular, he just did not leave and breathe. And that's... To be expected. Yeah. I mean, there was, you know, if you're if you're in Brian Doher and Fergal Logan's camp, you were going to put that attention on them. The stats would show that he was handling a lot of ball. The question was, what are you going to do about it now? How do we react now? And again, a lot of learning made there, and unfortunately, uh, a huge cost out of the All Ireland Championship. Peter Keane um, made the point. One of the things we've been doing all year is scoring goals. We had four goal opportunities today. We didn't come home with anything. You look at Tyrone, I think they had three goal opportunities. They came away with three. We had 33 shots at the post. We got 22 points. So certainly there's a sense that Kerry feel they left it behind them. Um, I would put it as well, Enda, and this this is probably sound like a criticism of Tyrone. It's not meant to by any means. I think they played David... Coldrick's threshold for what was a foul and what wasn't beautifully like Coldrick was letting defenders get hands in and and Tyrone on so many occasions I'd say walked 90% of the way up to a foul and then just cleverly you know released when the time was to release and like any time a Kerry player went anywhere near a Tyrone man I mean he was getting stuck and getting held up or getting you know there were speed bumps at every turn and uh, like as a defensive display it was kind of awesome because Darry used the phrase there they lived off crumbs and like they did a touch but then when they got possession they counterpunched brilliantly and then in a couple of times they you know showed patience in attack and picked off a score after going through several passages of play and rotating the ball so I mean like you really can't fault a lot of what Tyrone produced here yesterday it was a really impressive stuff it was it was immense, and I'll I'll not take it as a critique at all that that we no it's we, it's not meant that we, way we we firing that ninety percent line. In fact, I would take it as the absolute height of a compliment, and any championship footballer will like that. That is the nature of the game to to play at that very very age of the physicality and the intensity that you can bring to a game that you can exert on your opponent, and then you're seeing you're hoping that that can cough up your chances, and a uh, Trone done that brilliantly, and like. By no means was this a brilliant Tyrone footballing performance. I thought Tyrone turned over a lot of ball too. Tyrone made plenty of, of mistakes and, and there was issues with the Tyrone performance like the misfiring of the kick out. That's something certainly no no modern team wants, wants to have and yet it was there. But what stood out a mile for Tyrone and, and it was like you, 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 look at the, you look at the management, you look at Brian Duhu, you look at the likes of Collie Holmes that's in the backroom team. 
that performance yesterday was heart, it was grit, it was tenacity, it was everything that sort of made the, the throne name what it is. Uh, and going home yesterday, like the, the pride within the throne people of that performance, not that it was brilliant football. And we know this team can play even better football. We know as an attacking force, they have more to offer maybe than Tyrone has carried with it for probably eight, nine, ten years. And you can really see why Mickey Hart wanted that extra year because he could see the attacking potential that was there. Uh, but in saying that the defensive display, and I said it before, that was one of the things I was being confident about because Tyrone have stepped away from a real, as nearly all teams have now, an absolute blanket defence or permanent sweepers or permanent dual sweepers and all of that. It's very man-to-man -man a lot of the time back there. But in the likes of Podrick Hampshire and the likes of P.T. Hart and the likes of Ronan McNamee and the likes of McKernan, like Connor Myler with the role he plays, defensively they manned up man against man and it's almost as if the change in the tactics of the game, and this is the game as a whole among all the counties where it is more sort of man-to-man, -man, more in your face, more battles all over the pitch, that suits perfectly Tyrone's style where they want to bring a lot of energy to the game. And yes, they coming in as underdogs with with the hammering in Killarney. Like, you have to go back to the impact that that hammering in Killarney had on that Tyrone team and the authority it gave to the managers to strip away any egos, to strip things back to bare bones and demand of the fellas the rudimentary things that you have to bring to this level of sport, which is a huge, huge aggression and work rate and they brought it in speed yesterday. And, uh, it was immense. Like they're, like It was a fine line. Playing that Kerry forward line, it, it feels and it felt yesterday like a high wire act. Yeah. Kerry did have three, four good goal chances on another day. They could have took a couple of them and thrown would have been out. But the likes of Petey Hart's tackle uh, or block, the likes of uh, Michael O'Neill got in a phenomenal tackle on Sean O'Shea in the second half. The wee fine line of that square ball in the first half. Like just these games are fine, fine margins. And a lot of people are sort of putting the boot into Kerry to a certain extent. And I can understand that from a viewpoint of the, they were coming in as the vaunted team and got caught essentially by Throne. But Throne rode the fine lines yesterday. Mm. Uh, but as an underdog, you have to do that. No, you First do. First and foremost, you have to bring that energy. And they they done that in style yesterday. You do. And then you, you, you get your, your moments where Barry volleys the ball and you know goes straight to the uh, Tyrone player, or Canavan shot comes back and McShane palms it in, and suddenly you know six points there before you know it. And and I got the impression you were at the game. Can you? Because I was watching on TV, and suddenly there was this dynamic in the first period of extra time where any time Tyrone seemed to pick up the ball in the middle third, you could sense from the crowd that like a break was on, a big counter was on, and it seemed like Kerry were just suddenly so vulnerable from, you know, Tyrone in possession 50 metres out. What was going on in Kerry's half of the field there? Because it was out of picture, obviously, but you could sense from the crowd and the Tyrone body language that, like, there was a goal on almost from 50 metres out. It was. Uh, the, I think that was maybe Matty Donnelly's turnover, like Matty Donnelly does. Yeah. Huge work. And again, his his performance almost uh, typified what I was saying, where it wasn't perfect. Matty made mistakes. He probably didn't... In, Aspects of the game, he didn't have the impact he would have wanted. And yet, two, three, four massive, massive plays were purely about his desire to try and get a hand in and try and win the ball. Uh, he turned it over and sort of read the pass coming. And it was, it was a slightly slack pass. I think it was Paul Murphy maybe played it across the middle and it was cut out by Matty and him and Callum McShane essentially had had the, the, the rest of Crook Park to go. And again, you, the, the critical thing was as you looked out on the pitch, there was three, four other Trone players sprinting goalward and the Kerry rearguard action was sluggish. It was slack in that, that first period of extra time. I think Kerry were just caught. Sometimes it's hard to get yourself right back up to the pitch of the game. And maybe that's the mood that was in, within both camps at that sort of extra time or the interval between full time and extra time. It was quite a long interval. But obviously in Throne, there was massive positivity maybe for getting there. And in Kerry, they might have been wondering what are we doing? And obviously they would have realised Clifford wasn't difficultly too. So I think the two teams came out at a slightly different energy level. Uh, and that show, like for, for me on the, mm. on, watching it in, in the stand, it just looked like there was a Tyrone tide running at Kerry and Kerry were all at sea. But that's what I said right at the very start. To be fair, they, they settled themselves in the second period of extra time. But with five points down, there were... There were always in a really, really difficult place to try and get that game back. Yeah. 
Uh, O'Shea and Clifford Dara scored 16 of Kerry's 22 scores, which is kind of damning. There was a sense as the camera kept cutting to Clifford and you suspected the physio was doing everything he could to massage out whatever cramp was going on or whatever dead leg was going on to do whatever he could to get him back on. There was such a sense when Clifford went off that Kerry are in trouble here. Have we overestimated, like in the media and, and, and beyond, have we overestimated how good the supporting cast to Clifford are at the moment? Uh, they're, they're decent players there, um, but um, let's say Paul Ganey was probably a better footballer five years ago. Um, Paddy has yet to come. Uh, Sean O'Shea is a fantastic free taker and is a very good player from play as well, but you know would probably contribute more from play over the next couple of years as well. Stephen O'Brien has has had a good innings. I thought Jim O'Connor added something when he came on. Darrell Minehan was coming back from injury. Kind of all these estimations and causes and excuses. I think a lot of it comes down to split-second decision-making. Um, you look at split-second decisions being made. There was mention made of Peter Hart's block on Killian Spillane, for example. There's a split-second there where that, is, that ch- goal chance disappears and you take your point. Um, do you attract a run or not? You it's see funny you say that. Mar- Mar- Mark O'Shea, funny you say that. Mark O'Shea made that exact point in the paper today. He said that's one where in, when Peter Hart's coming in and you take your point, you keep things moving. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, I did it myself in, in an All Ireland final. Again, Kieran McGinn got a block and went for a goal when probably a point was on. Uh, split second decisions in your head out in the field, and this is absolute split second stuff. Like, uh, uh, let's say Ronan McNamee runs up the field, or you know Michael McKernan runs up the field. Do you track or not? Do you ask somebody else to track? Uh, where Tyrone didn't even have that split second decision making process, they just did. Kerry thought about it, and by the by the time that they, it, 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 you know they had a decision made, number two, three, and four uh, had had scored from play. Um, you know, the, you, you make split second decisions like a ball. Kieran McGeary kicks in a high ball, a ball to nothing that's going nowhere really. Jack Barry makes a decision to to put a foot to it. You know, and probably if if he, if he leaves a bounce into him, he had the ground taken on his opponent there. And you know, these are all split second decisions being made. You know, they'll obviously be talking about the Tommy Welch one um, at the end. You know, probably a reason, like say players. You know how how Tyrone worked a situation in injury time where they were able to get Darren McCurry to be the shooter. You know that's that's what they would have wanted beforehand. That was engineered and that wasn't you know that was totally by design. And uh, you know these are all split second decisions that people make. And you know they live or die by those those split second decisions or lose games or whatever. I mean I think it would be remiss of us as well not to mention probably the greatest one of the greatest free kicks I've ever seen in Croke Park by Niall Morgan, you know, it was outside the 70 yard like there was a time when you'd be happy to take, to kick a 50 in a game of football. Now they're kicking him from 70 and beyond. I mean, he had to kick it because it was the last kick of the first half, but you win, you lose a game by a point and you look at a kick like that, It's it, it was a massive, massive kick and, you know, he can take credit for that, you know, and it's huge credit for that. So, you know, when you, you're, to answer your question about the supporting cast to, to, to Clifford and O'Shea, they probably haven't found the right dynamic. How much time did Sean O'Shea play in, play in the strongest position yesterday on the 40? Before the game, I would have thought the fact that Kerry were moving and interchanging so often up to now in the league and championship that it was actually a, an advantage. I don't think so yesterday. I, I think it didn't fool anybody, only themselves, really. You know, I think Tyrone were, were, were on to it fairly early. Um, Paul Ganey is an inside line man. You know, you know, when he was winning his All Stars a number of years ago, was always on the inside. Sean O'Shea on the 40, David Clifford has to be on the inside line. And when David Clifford moves out the field, which he's had to do over the course of his, his three-year career at county level, like a, a bit, you know, that's just a modern game. You have to track your man and goal, but that's meat and drink to defenders. That's where you want him. Um, so they're not bad players. They are the best. That's what's, what's in Kerry. Uh, Paddy Clifford has added a bit to it this year. Dermot O'Connor Connor will grow into it. Killian Spillane usually has more of an impact off the bench, but that's what's there. That is what's there. Mm. But um, it comes down to split-second decision-making and... You know, I, I do think, and I go back to that kind of mental conditioning that was there coming into the game, it had been a bit all too easy, hadn't had enough of that 20-minute stuff against Cork, yeah. um, got a bit of a challenge against Dublin in the league. Other than that, I'm struggling to think of moments where Kerry were really oh. tested, and that's the mental conditioning. I'm not sure it's a physical conditioning thing. You mentioned the space that was there in the first half of extra time, for example, Joe. Jason Foley, who had played quite well up to that point, was cramping badly at that stage, and maybe again spent maybe three or four minutes on the field more than he should have. That decision should have been probably made a bit quicker, but it's easy to say that from up in the stand. Mm. Um, but he, he definitely was conceding space uh, in in those three or four minutes where Tyrone did the damage, having had played very well up to that point. And, you know, they're the decisions that are going to torment very people right into the winter. They are. Dara, do you expect to see Peter Keane back for year number four? Kerry is an unforgiving environment. Like, it's... I find it kind of... 
I find it kind of hard and sad to talk about, you know, the way we treat our managers down here in Kerry. Um, it, it's, it's a very unforgiving environment. Everybody becomes an expert very, very quickly. I've seen it over the course of my entire career. I've seen it post my career playing football, like, you know, where we make decisions. The question you always have to ask is, uh, is as is our management improving players do her and Logan certainly have improved a template that was strong as Enda said there Mickey Hart was keen to stay on for another year and rightly so he could see the stuff was there um, Peter Keane has had three years that has lost in all Ireland final after replay last year was against Cork was you know not not uh, not acceptable to any carry person and yesterday against Tyrone just came up against a team that were sharper hungrier um, you know tracked the runners way better than we did Um and and played their cards way better than we did in terms of setting defensive traps. You know, do, do managers set out a plan for players to play? They got a lot right in, in terms of kickouts, which was huge on both sides. They did really well in that one. But Kerry is going to be an unforgiving environment for Peter Keane over the course of this winter. And um, you know, it's, it's I would hope that it's entirely his decision. You know, Eamon Fitzmaurice had kind of that luxury in the previous management, but again, public opinion had turned against him in the last year as well. It's it's a hard place to be. There are no outstanding candidates stepping forward saying, look, this is my track record. This is what I've achieved in the game between club and county to replace what's there. And, you know, I have nothing but respect for anybody that takes those, up those jobs, particularly Kerry management. It's unforgiving. Even Mickey Hart, who achieved all he did in Tyrone over the course of a number of years there, there was probably a tide turning against him towards the end as well. Mm. Um, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But, you know... <laughs> People, I suppose, expect all the time, and that expectations creates particular standards. It has happened in Kerry, and you know, it's happened in Toronto, or whatever yeah. place. A very a history-making manager with a joint manager, you know, the joint managers that have bought a team to an All Ireland final in the first attempt. So, hopefully, Peter King gets to make his own decision. He will be he will be crucified, I would say, from here to Christmas on decisions that he's made and didn't make. I can imagine. And uh, finally, and uh, Ronaldo at Manchester United. Tyrone out working Kerry in Crow Park ambushing them it's 2008 all over again who's favourites who, who are the raging hot favourites for this final now oh well of course you have to say Mayo oh do, uh, oh, do you do Trouble. you I didn't realise I, I, I didn't I didn't realise you had to say that now but that's how you're playing it okay good to know early oh, on absolutely. we're, we're going to go with Mayo uh, and look Throne, Throne are used to playing the pantomime villain in, in a lot of roles and I think we're going to have to dawn and be very comfortable in that mask now coming up against Mayo because it's hard even the hardest of hearts would, would feel it uh, tough to not wish or not think that Mayo have earned uh, an All Ireland title but we all know sport and Mayo knows sport better than anybody and Trone will know that these chances are few and far between and this team also has had their their downs and they have missed out and they'll feel at times the Throne team I'm talking about they'll feel at times that they haven't and they haven't really got the respect they're still living under the, the shadow of, of the teams that I was a part of back in the noughties looking at the way they played yesterday like make, make no bones about it that was for me probably Tyrone's best ever performance and result in, in Croke Park in terms of what they were up against what they dealt with what the players showed on the day like so those boys you, you have to earn your learning medals and then whenever the chance comes you have to grab them and uh, from a Tyrone point of view whilst you can obviously respect everything about Mayo and the Mayo uh, story down over the years which we've all loved and, and what they done against Dublin was immense uh, but Tron will, will look after their own ship and while 31 counties will be against us we're, we're not particularly unused to that scenario Oh, the chip on the, the shoulder here is joy it's, to behold It's growing, it's growing I'm not sure if it's a McCain chip or what chip it's maybe a phone chip buddy at this stage oh. but there's, there, there'll be chips there at Lampy. but no, no, no better way than coming into the Ireland final No, look, it'll, look yeah. it's a great final it is. Both teams will look great. at it with full confidence, you know no, it should be great. Listen, fellas, brilliant analysis. Darrow Kneja, Enda McGinley, thank you. All the best. Um.